Today's special emergency Sunday night edition of the Bill Simmons podcast is brought to you by SeatGeek. That's our presenting sponsor since 1943. SeatGeek spent Super Bowl week helping football fans find the best Super Bowl seats at the best prices, fully guaranteed with the revolutionary grading system and a team of ticket concierge experts that are a phone call away with free advice. Download the free SeatGeek app today and get ready for, for the rest of the NBA and NHL seasons, college hoops, music, so much more. Go right to SeatGeek.com. We're also brought to you by Channel 33. That's the Ringer's pop culture podcast feed with shows covering video games, celebrity culture, pro wrestling, the Oscars, The Bachelor. It's also where you can find my Sports Movie Hall of Fame podcast series with Chris Ryan. Subscribe to Channel 33 and all of our other Ringer podcasts on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Play. And we are brought to you by TheRinger.com. Go there and check out all the written audio and video content that we did before, during, and after Super Bowl 51. And finally... We're brought to you by the heart medication that my dad took with about two minutes left in the fourth quarter of Super Bowl 51. I do not know the brand. I just know he took them and he, and he just said, don't judge me. All right, let's start the podcast. All right, it is Sunday night. We rarely do this. Thanks to Jim Cunningham, one of our Ringer producers, for coming in on very short notice. But we figured it was probably one of the three or four greatest football games professional ever played. One of the great comebacks in the history of sports. And maybe the worst football loss of all time. But we'll, we'll, we're going to talk about that later with Cousin Sal. We're going to call my dad, who's still in a puddle on, on my couch. And right now we're going to talk to the ringers, Mike Lombardi, who worked for Bill Belichick, both in Cleveland and in New England. Did you ever give up? At 28-3, did you give up? Oh, yeah, yeah. you know, the game was so unpatriot-like. I mean, it was just so unpatriot-like. They were doing things that you, you didn't expect. I mean, first play of the game was the same play that Denver ran against them uh, against us two years ago in the, in the snow game in the overtime loss. Right. Uh, and, you know, they busted for 40 years and then they never got it fixed again and it just didn't seem like and then no, no receivers for the Patriots seemed to come down with any of those contested balls and it was one of those games where you just looked at the scoreboard and you thought well if Atlanta just keeps trying to score how does how do they close this gap right I was and, actually when they did the onside kick I thought it was when it was, I uh, it was 20 I, I thought oh, it was see, a little I, too early to do that I thought it was the opposite I was like it's 28 to 9 might as well do the onside kick hope we get it cuz we've shown no signs whatsoever of of stopping this Falcons team I'm with you though in that first half it was such an unpatriots like they, the coaching was off it felt like the Falcons were better prepared I had no idea why we weren't spreading them and doing the, basically the pass offense that they did in the second half the Falcons seemed faster the Patriots seem completely unprepared for those plays that you wrote about in the ringer this week, those little edge runs. Uh, they once, once they decided that they had to double Julio, it seemed like the whole field was open. And I just couldn't figure out, even the special teams was a mess. That was about the worst half I've ever seen from a Bill Belichick team, right down to the pick six, right? I mean, that was like a yeah, rookie no, throw by was- Brady. Yeah, I know. He, you know, he. Everybody said, "Well, he got fooled in the coverage." I don't think he did. I mean, he saw it was one lurk. He saw the guy coming down. I think he just felt like he could get it in there, and where the guy was going to get picked off. But look, the, the Falcons played more man than maybe perhaps the the Patriots thought they were going to play. Right. Even though they were playing man to man against Atlanta, they played man to man against Seattle. They put their corners out there, and. Really, Malcolm Mitchell was the one guy that was able to get separation. I kept thinking to myself, Michael Floyd should have been active for the game. Yeah, me too. They just didn't have enough juice of the outside at the receiver position. And then on the last drive, when they went to four receivers, they took Bennett off the field a couple plays, and they kind of got some matchups going. But it was an unpatriotic game. I, I, I just never thought that they would have to play from behind. I thought the team that got the lead would keep scoring right. and put the game away. And they and it turned out the silver lining, and this is something we talked about at, at halftime as we were trying to the two silver linings that came up with halftime was one, I'm glad I'm not there. That was that I went to that one right away. It was like the only way this would be worse would be to be in the stadium. And then the second one was I think the Pats had the ball for like twenty minutes in the first half because the Falcons had quick drives, they got the pick six, and it just seemed like Falcons They're, only had the ball. Falcons had the ball like eleven minutes in the first. Yeah, half. yeah something. Like it was like ten or eleven minutes, and then you know, as the third period started, you, 
they stopped them at the beginning of that first drive. Pats come back. They screw it up. Falcons come back and score pretty quick. Pats have a long drive coming back. They stop them. Then they have the field goal drive that that happened. And all of a sudden, it felt like the Falcons' defense was on the field for just a long time, and they just didn't seem as fast anymore. Couldn't you see them wearing down as the game went on? Yeah, I, I think it clearly. I think it was a lot like the comp- it was like the the NC two A game, the Clemson Alabama game, where Alabama's defense just got tired, and it looked to me like Atlanta just ran out of gas. They we talked about their lack of depth in the defensive front, and it proved out. But look, they played ninety three plays. It's hard to play good for oh all that God. amount of time. I mean, they just got worn down, and they couldn't do it. I mean, it just and that's when Brady started throwing the ball. I mean, the, the most important play of the game was calling heads because right. once Brady got the ball back. You knew they were going to score. I mean, everybody in the stadium knew they were going to score. Right. And I, I, you and I were texting during the game. Neither of us could understand why they weren't pushing the pace, why they weren't spread out. Didn't really understand. the. I, I think they must have thought Blunt was going to overpower them, and it just wasn't the case. The Falcons yeah. were so ready for them. And Their quickness was much better than the, than oh, the Patriots man. anticipated. And the stunts and the movement of the defensive front was quicker than I think the Patriots anticipated. And that was a problem. From the first first third and one, when they didn't get it, when Blunt ran in there and lost a half a yard, yeah. you almost thought to yourself, like, really? This is not the Patriots. That's, that's third and one is something they've practiced. They're ready for it because they know how important third and ones are. It just it, it was Atlanta's game. Atlanta was playing Patriot-like football Yeah. So for the first three quarters. Pats finally score. Goskowski missed the PAT. It's it's just dead in the in the Simmons house. And I'm doing the math. I'm like, 19 points. That's eight, eight, and three. It's three scores. We're still alive. You know, but it's like <laughs> the only thing you're thinking is Tom Brady's on our team. But at that point, like, it just seemed like Julio had one giant play in him, right? It seemed like Freeman had one monster run in him. And you just need everything to go right. The Pats had already given up the pick six. They'd already given up a terrible fumble inside the 30. So they'd given up basically, what do you call those? The four point plays? They would, they'd given up. Yep. They were horrible in the red zone. They, yeah. they, Atlanta was three for three in the red zone. All of them. They, convert, they converted on third down. They had third and 10, and Hopper catches the big pass for the touchdown. They also, on the third down play, when Coleman goes in man coverage against Ninkovich, not a great plan. Right. You know, scores the touchdown. You know, I mean, Atlanta did exactly, you know, they were three for three in the red zone. They were one for one on goal line. I mean, Look, Atlanta. Atlanta was doing the Patriot game. That they were still on the Patriot game plan. There's no doubt. So if you just go through, like, you know, this was a borderline football miracle. I think when you're down 25 in the Super Bowl, and oh, no doesn't seem like you can stop the team. It starts on that first drive down 28-3. They run basically a fourth down. I think on their own 45-46. Get get it to uh, Amendola to keep that first drive alive. Brady does the 19-yard sneak, which to which that was point... Which might have been the longest play of the game, I think. Yeah, I think point. it was. It was the biggest play of the game for them. So the Pats score there, and then uh, they get the ball back and just end up with... They get a stop, and then they get back, and Brady takes a, a sneaky bad sack up the middle of the line of scrimmage, and uh, and they end up settling for that field goal, and they're still they're down 16, but then the biggest play of the game happens... With uh, that third and one, Falcons have it. They take a deep drop for Matt Ryan, and he takes the big sack from Hightower. Just walk walk me through the football science of that play. Was he trying to go deep? What was he trying to do on that? Because that was it, it such a like huge play. From the, end zone, from the end zone copy, you know, we never saw we never saw the route distribution. We always saw it from behind Brady, from behind Ryan. It looked like they were trying to throw an in cut, and they had it fairly well covered. I don't know what Freeman was doing because Freeman stepped up like he was going to block them. Yeah. And then he didn't block Hightower, and Hightower just went through, and he took a long gated drop, and he took a long wind-up to throw the ball. Third and two, you're running the ball fairly effectively there, and all of a sudden, even if you have to punt there, you're okay. The last thing you want to do is create field position for an offense that was actually struggling. Well, And, and, and on know, top of call, it, it was, it was third and one. That's the other thing. It wasn't it was like it was third, third and, and eight. One, right. So right, and so you want the ball to come out quick. It didn't come out quick, and you know, of course, naturally that tur- that turnover creates momentum. It creates you know, it creates a situation where they can score quickly on a, on a quarter of the field. Something that if you just punt there, you're yeah. actually not worried. You, you know, they're going to go on a longer field. 
I, I don't. I couldn't tell the route. I'll see it tomorrow when I watch the game tape. But I couldn't tell the route distribution of the play because we never really got a chance to see it. But that's right. the other thing I think we really missed as fans during the game. Nobody was telling us how many plays Atlanta was playing. I know. You know, they, they so, were like, they weren't telling us formations. They weren't telling us total plays on each side. None of that stuff. We never knew. Yeah, and so I. In fact, I, I I thought Brady had 24 completions in the fourth quarter alone. I'm thinking Cousin Sal on his on his uh, Brady on his uh, prop bet. You know, I was hoping <laughs> he would get it. You know, and and I never I never got to see what Brady's numbers were. I was like, what? How many completions he had to have? 24. You know, like oh, he had 40, he had 43. Really where it, he had 43 for the game, but yeah. we never got a sense of how many plays they were playing. We never got a sense of how tired they were. And look, I, I will say this: I think a lot in the first half they were really. Atlanta was doing a lot of pulling and tugging. They got called for a couple holds, but then you could have called them almost every time for it because they were just they were going to take liberties with it and figure they got away with it. Patriots got away with a huge, huge face mask penalty on Logan Ryan. I mean, that really won the game for them because if they if that's offsetting penalties there, maybe Atlanta comes to their senses because Matthews held on that play and then right. they just run it or try to get five yards. I mean, that, that was really a, call that was saved. a double that was a double face mask though cuz Ryan's helmet got thrown off too. So Yeah, right. And and there and, and actually from the replay, the the left guard, you could see Levitra put, had his hand in somebody else. There was everybody had a hand on a face mask. That might have been the face mask play. When uh when they when they got the high tower fumble sack and they showed Brady's reaction, that was the first time I actually thought the Pats had a chance. Brady was locked in. He had a reaction like they were down three with four minutes left or something. He just got up and he, had the, and he was ready and he was rolling. I'm like, oh, man. And then you start thinking, this defense has been on the field for basically the whole game. And the Pats have found their rhythm now with all the receivers. The only thing is you start thinking like, you know, he throws 62 times. Like Edelman's out there basically every play. Uh, Bennett's out there a lot of the plays. James White's out there a ton. Mitchell, Hogan, like those guys, how are they not dead by the end of the fourth quarter? That was the one part I don't get well, about football. Look, I think their conditioning's remarkable. Look, they run the hill. They take pride in running the hill every week. They do it. It's something they believe in. Their conditioning, they wear people down. They're, they're well-conditioned. And, and look, they, they just were able to outwear them. But I think the factor here is third and one, you got the ball. There's 831 to go in the game. Yeah. Think about this. 831 to go in the game. If you run it there and don't get the first down, That's the fine. game's going to go under seven minutes. Yeah. It's going to go under eight minutes, you know? And I think that call right there really was, you know, obviously the turnover was huge. But well, wait a second, though. That, you know, that, that way, I mean, if this may have been the worst football loss at least professionally right. that we've no, had. No, they, they if you go Atlanta, through? Took, Atlanta took a ga- uh, they took a brain fart from the eight minute from when they got the ball at nine forty four to go in the game up twenty eight to twelve. They st- they started having brain farts because when the after the Pats scored to make it twenty eight twenty, there was one time when there's like five minutes left and I think they got a first down and he yeah, ran they the went next thirty nine pl- yards. They got a first down and he ran either the next play or the play right after that. With like twenty two seconds left on the play clock, yeah, it was like was, five minutes left in the game. The clock. Yeah, right. Because when they went on the field with nine forty four to go, at that point of the game, the clock was their opponent, not the Patriots. Right. This is where people don't understand it. The clock was their opponent because you had to reduce the clock. You're down by, you're up by sixteen points. So you, the that's two possessions plus two points. Forty You've seconds. You got to milk one of those. You got to milk the clock. 40 and seconds of play. that's I think Atlanta. Atlanta just really, they didn't realize their opponent was not the Patriots at that point. It was the clock. So anytime you could milk the clock, even if you got to run it on third and one there, and milk 40 more seconds off, you got a chance. So then on top of that, so then the Pats come down, they score. It's 28-20. And they have that drive. They run the Kevin Falk two-point two play, yeah, they, which is they, great. I mean, they, Oh, don't think my dad and I did say that right away. I was like, oh, Kevin Falk, this place been around for 100 years. So then uh, they get to the 23 on Julio making, you know, just pound for pound, one of the greatest football catches I've ever seen in my life. I don't know how Eric Rowe didn't tip it, and yet Julio caught it. Julio, I don't know how Julio kept his feet in. He gets down on the 23. There's four minutes left. The game's over. They're up seven. You could kneel three times and kick a 40-yard field goal and make the Pats use all their timeouts, and the Pats are down 10 with three minutes left. 
and no timeouts, and and I think it's a wrap. And instead, when they went backwards. It Julio, it, it, when he throws it to Julio, there's 4:47 to go. So at this point, you're up eight. You know the Patriots. The Patriots still have their. They have time. They have three timeouts. Right. So two more first downs, and basically the game's over. But even let's and say, but let's field say goal, the game's over. Let's say they kneel three times and kick a field goal, and make the Patriots use all three timeouts. They're still up ten with four minutes left. Like whatever you do, don't go backwards. It's an onside kick game. Yeah, it's an onside kick game. You, which, you, which again, your opponent's the clock, not the Patriots. You got to make it an onside kick game. Right. You've got to make it an onside kick game, and that's what they didn't do. They didn't make it an onside kick game, so they throw it. I, I don't know how the ball got through Rowe. I don't even know how Matt Ryan thought that Julio was open. Like, I have no idea. Like, I, I would like to think it was the greatest throw since the Aaron Rodgers throw in the Cowboy game, but at least Aaron Rodgers thought that the guy was open. I don't know how Matt Ryan thought his guy was open. He just made a play. So, that's the amazing thing about this game. When you go back and analyze this game, the Patriots receivers – for the most part, never really gave Brady a play. The longest play of the game is 28 yards. Hogan couldn't come down with the ball. Edelman had a lot of drops. They, Bennett had a chance to make a play down the field. They couldn't make a play down the field to really loosen this defense up. It was the first Pats game where, where the Gronk absence was really noticeable, and it was ready to be one yeah. of my first three excuses if, if, if they had lost, of just there, there was no guy that the, that, uh, the Falcons were really terrified of I thought their game plan was excellent. Man to man, four man rush. I didn't, neither of us thought they'd be able to pressure Brady that way. But when you look at the way that they botched those last eight minutes, I mean, we didn't even talk about not only did they go backwards from their own 23 and end up having to punt, but then after the incredible Edelman catch, which was uh, God's gift for the, for the Tyree catch, finally got us back. Right. But Dan Quinn. Or, or the Mario Manningham catch, yes. Dan Quinn uses a challenge. On, on, yeah, uses I, his last time out to stop the clock for us at two o three, and then gives us another play, and then uses all his timeouts. So then, when they actually got the ball back, they had the ball with fifty seconds left, tie game, you know, and they had no timeouts. They had fifty seven seconds to go, but they had no timeouts. So right. it was easy for New England. Just all you got to do is tackle the ball, and then they took a, a check down for four yards, which you know, that took another 20 seconds off the clock. You know, yeah. the, they went 52 seconds to 32 seconds, and then they had to spike the ball, so they give up a play. You, you know, i, I, I got to give it credit. I think the, the superstar of the game was the ref who called it a complete on the field. Because if they, cause from my vantage point on the couch, I thought it was incomplete. Right. It wasn't until the replay that it looked like a completion. I thought it was an incredible call. And Belichick was going to have to challenge it had it been the other way. Right. And that and that ref came flying in with like almost like he was in a sports movie, like really tugging on that it was a catch. But it was amazing, you know. So the uh, the Falcons, you mentioned that that last minute, the completion, twenty seconds roll off the clock. Now it's down to thirty two. He throws the five yard out to the tight end. Guy gets tackled. Then they have to stop the clock. I mean, that was a disaster. That I really right. think. I, Julio has to be involved prominently in, with 50 seconds left. My my fear as a Patriot fan was just don't throw it to Julio. Don't throw jump balls right. to Julio. Don't throw to him in double coverage. Don't throw a Hail Mary to anything with Julio. I'm out. Please, no. And, right. and, and it never happened. Then the Pats win the greatest coin flip in the history of the NFL, right? Has there ever been a bigger coin right. flip? Heads, I don't think the Patriots should call anything but heads for the rest of their career as a franchise. Just to remind everybody that Heads won him a Super Bowl because you knew when he got the ball back at the 25, they were, they were going to score. There was no way they were going to give the ball back to Matt Ryan again. They were tired. Yep. And, you know, I mean, look, it just took them how many plays? And overtime, it took them three, six, nine plays to score. Yeah, that they had five, last five drives of the game, they scored 31 points. Eight for eighty-five, twelve for seventy-two led to the field goal. Five for twenty-five after the high tower fumble. Ten for ninety-one to tie the game. Now they get two two points on those last two. Win the toss. Eight for seventy-five. That I mean that that could not have happened in the history of football before. Even like I don't remember what happened in the Frank Reich game, which is always like the go-to example for the great comebacks. The the thirty-one points in five drives. 
It's just it, remarkable. It, I mean, it really is, especially with a quarterback who's gotten a lot of body punches thrown to him, and his eye level never went down. That's what makes him the GOAT. That's what makes him the greatest of all time. They hit him a bunch, and he just got stronger as the game went on. And once they got control of the pass rush because Atlanta was tired, yeah. look, I didn't think Atlanta could rush the way they did. I think the two factors proved out. Atlanta was way better in the defensive front than I anticipated in terms of pressure and I thought Atlanta's offensive line was the weakness. I didn't care what pro football focus had it as the sixth best line. They gave up. They were one for eight on third down. They had Ryan was sacked five times in the game. It was a problem pass protecting. When Flowers, to me, which is an unsung hero of the game, you know, really the, the sack he got, the pressure he created was really a problem for him. So, you know, to me, you know, when Atlanta looks back on this, there's a lot of ways they can go. But starting with nine minutes to go in the game, their inability to convert third downs. But they played, for the most part, the perfect game up until the nine-minute mark of the fourth quarter. And as my buddy Hench points out, this is an email he sent tonight. We held them to 12.3 yards per pass and 5.8 yards per rush. Wait, what? How did this happen? It's so the Falcons. Well, they didn't have the ball enough. I mean, they, they barely had the ball. They didn't have enough. The problem was Atlanta didn't have the ball enough. Right. I mean, you know, and, and so they couldn't really do it. And when they had the opportunity, third and one, you know, they go back and replay that game again. You know, I mean, they're going to have to, they're going to run toss crack again. But that's that's what happens. But, you know, that's why you play four quarters. I mean, I didn't anticipate the game going this way. I thought New England would score 34 points. I didn't anticipate it going this way in terms of where Atlanta would be the dominant team for three quarters. Right. But the reality was, you know, New England found a way to sneak back into it. And I think, you know, you can talk about Pete Carroll's inability to run the ball on, on the fourth and one. To me, Pete Carroll had to throw the ball there based on the front of the defensive line of the Patriots. So, I, 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 to me, that, I don't think that was as egregious as third and one having a chance to run it and knowing who your opponent is. And I think Atlanta's going to look back on this. I mean, look, Arthur Blank was on the field. He was ready to get the trophy. That was under, I couldn't believe when they showed him. I couldn't believe he was out there. Is that You've been in football a long time. Is that the worst football loss you've ever seen? It's one of them. Yeah, I mean, those are ones. I mean, Atlanta, you know, I know everybody said after the game, Atlanta will come back and they'll bounce back from it. That's a hard one to bounce back from. That's a hard one to bounce back from because you gave it everything and you just, you know, you did everything you possibly could do. You're going to lose your coordinator now. And, you know, you just had a chance to, to let the game and it slip right through your fingertips. I, I, to me, I think Mark Cuban tweeted this and I retweeted it. There's Winning's great, but those losses, they never leave you. The tuck game never left me. Games you just don't lose. Losing the Super Bowl to Tampa Bay has never left. I mean, you just don't ever let that go, and it's hard to bounce back again because what most people do is what Arizona did last year is they think they can reclimb the mountain without climbing. Right. And Atlanta's got to start all over again, and that's the challenge. It's hard to do. It's a hard thing to do in sports is to reclimb something once you've been so close. I already thought Brady was the greatest quarterback of all time. This This clinched it. I, I'm just speechless. I just can't believe how amazing he was from from uh, 28 to 3 on. I, I just can't imagine another quarterback who could have done that. Do you think, he, I, especially after all the well, hits he took. Let me ask you took, this question. How, how many texts did you get at halftime saying they better not trade Garoppolo? I mean, I thought the I game know. was a little bit like, I, I, I tweeted this, I thought this was the worst the Patriots have played since the Miami, Monday night game in Kansas City. Yeah, I agree. And after that game, everybody was calling for Brady's, the, Brady's demise. And this was a little bit of a microcosm of that game plus the Bengal game. I mean, three quarters was the Kansas City game, the fourth quarter was the Bengal game. Right. I got a lot of tweet, a lot of texts from people around the league, people, the friends of mine that said, oh, you know, he better hang on to Jimmy G. People were tweeting, you know, Jimmy G will be all the starting quarterback. I mean, Brady didn't look, you know, they're saying his arm didn't look good. I didn't think he got a lot of help from his receivers early no, in the game. a lot of and drops. I think that was a problem. Yeah, a lot of drops, and all of a sudden they stopped dropping and the passes. contested balls, they didn't, they didn't make plays on the contested balls. I mean, Hogan had a chance, that deep ball that was over his shoulder, he had a chance to make that play. Last words on, on uh, William Stephen Belichick? I mean, look, the guy, how about the fact that anybody noticed there was not an emblem on his shoulder? There wasn't a Patriot logo. <laughs> Did you notice that? <laughs> I didn't. That's fantastic. He... There was no Patriot logo on his shirt. It was, and it was, it was classic. I mean, look, the, the one thing is, in, in years to come, you know, we talk about the miracle on ice and the Herb Brooks speech to the. This game is going to be coaches around the world, soccer coaches. They are going to show this in terms of teaching their team the element of mental toughness, how to keep fighting. 
it's easier said than done. It's, it never is going to go this way. I think if they played the last nine minutes of this game ten times, the Patriots win once. Well, I mean, let's be honest. And, and here's the other thing that we didn't even talk about. The Super Bowl halftime break really helped them. And I remember when I was at the Rams Pat Super Bowl, Super Bowl 36, we're up 14-3. We're the 14-point underdogs. We have incredible momentum. U2 comes out. They sing for a half hour. They, they have to dismantle it. By the time the game started again, it felt like we were watching you know, a second football game. It had no relation to the first half. And it did feel like you know, the Falcons going into halftime, it felt like they were going to win 60 to nothing. Or sixty to three, whatever. Right, and it was. then they had the ball to start. They had yeah. the ball to start. I mean, that you're thinking they're going to come out and do it. I mean, look, this the Lady Gaga Super Bowl. I mean, she clearly didn't miss Tony Bennett. That was, and she's not afraid of heights. I mean, like when she was up on the top of that thing, I was, I was getting chills just seeing how the hell she was going to come down from that. <laughs> she's no Bernice, but it was, but it remarkable. was pretty great. It was remar- It was one of the greatest halftime shows I've seen. I mean, it really was. And I agree with you. It's hard to recharge. You practice that a little bit. I know the Patriots practiced that long halftime. I'm sure Atlanta practiced the long halftime. But I think really what happens is you've got to go into with the mindset at 0-0, and you've got to score it. And if Atlanta scores and sets the tempo right away, I know they traded and they got up 28-3, to but, you know, look, the last nine minutes, Atlanta's going to look back and say, God, we had a chance. It's situational football. We didn't play it. But for Falcon fans, look, they with nine minutes to go in the game, you play that game over again, you're going to win nine out of ten times. Patriots are really lucky tonight. I don't think you made the Falcons fans feel better right there. I, I know I didn't. I mean, I was trust me, I'm sure your Twitter was – I was getting killed by I, every Falcon fan I didn't in America. Look. I didn't look. I will say this, though. That has to be the first NFL overtime game where one team had the ball for 93 plays and the other team had the ball for 46. It's really That's remarkable. how weird that game was, is. It was like the championship game. I mean, Atlanta defense just wilted. I mean, Dwight Freeney looked like he had found the fountain of youth. He really did. I mean, it was unbelievable. He, he, and I think the Patriots did a really bad job of changing the snap count. And that happens to you when you get it, when you're playing from behind. Yep. You don't manage the game correctly. They didn't play the snap count very well. Atlanta was getting off on the ball just as much as they were. And, you know, look, it, it, it was one of those where the greatest player, I, I've never seen anybody like Tommy Brady in my life. I mean, that was remarkable. And his will to win and his ability to make some of those throws that he made after he had the, how the hell beat out of him is remarkable. And at age 39. I mean, let's all agree there's at never been there's never been a better performance by an older athlete than what we saw tonight. That's a, that's a, I was trying to avoid superlatives for this whole podcast, but I think – you just have to put this at the top of any late 30s, early 40s, mid 40s. Maybe Nicholas at the 86 Masters. I don't know. But uh, yeah, unbelievable. So you'll be on the Ringer NFL show this week with Mays. I hope midweek going breaking down really some of the technical assets yeah. of this game. But in the meantime, thanks for uh, thanks for coming on on short notice, my friend. I'll talk to you soon. Uh, Mike Lombardi. Oh, it was great. Thanks, Bill. All right. Thanks, man. Thanks, Bill. All right. Bye-bye. All right, on the line right now, the cuz. Cousin Sal, we're taping this. Usually we do Monday mornings. Today it's Sunday night. Uh, worst football loss ever, greatest football comeback ever, or greatest gambling moment ever? What do you pick one? Can I say worst gambling uh, moment ever? You didn't give me that option. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What, uh, if I, what, what, what if I bought it up to plus three and a half? Would, would you say that's the worst gambling moment ever? That's pretty horrible. You didn't really do that, did you? Oh, yeah, sure. That was oh. my cousin South Shore thing pick. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you took the Patriots. I didn't even look. No, no. I'll tell you oh. what. I uh, I listened to that. And when we did the podcast, that, that and and I was like, you know what? That was such a Patriots jerk fest. These guys are too, they're too confident. And I'm sure, I, I'm sure that's what happened uh, just 20 minutes before this uh, part of the podcast uh, aired. But I thought I had the right side. I really did. I was like, I thought the Patriots hadn't faced a quarterback like Ryan. And uh, I was like, they're not going to be ready for this. And uh, they were ready in the second half, that's for sure. I think you made a great pick. I mean, I, I think Thank that's one, so of the, one of the flukiest football games we'll ever see in our lives where you have one team takes this huge lead but barely has the ball and their defense slowly wears down in the second half. And then you have, you know, the best quarterback of all time on the other team. And then Lombardi just said, if you played the last nine minutes of the fourth quarter ten times, the Falcons win nine of the ten. And they the the shots in the foot that they did to themselves over right. those last eight minutes really helped, not to mention the Patriots making all the plays that they made. 
But yeah, right. I, I I don't want to say fluke because the Pats made so many great plays. But man, if you played that game forty times from Falcons twenty one to three at halftime, I don't know how mm-hmm. many of the Pats win. Maybe two or three. And you don't think when uh, a missed extra point followed by the same kicker uh, getting in the way of his own onside kick, which the Falcons didn't capitalize on, and then combine that with the Julio Jones magnificent catch, top three Super Bowl catches of all time, amazing, putting them at the 21-yard line, those three things together, that team doesn't usually lose. But I will say Belichick's legacy now is largely due to – two of the biggest coaching brain farts in the history of football. We, we have to admit this at least, right? Oh, Quinn right. has a first down at the 21 after that great Julio catch with three and change, and you go empty backfield? You don't so even was, get them to use timeouts? Like, how, how do you not go up 11 there with three minutes left? It was twenty. Like, it was the 23-yard line. Lombardi said there was 447 left. I thought there was less. but No, there was less. But, uh, less. yeah, I, I mean, if they kneel three times and kick a field goal, we're, we're basically screwed. I, I the, the Falcons did so many bizarre things. Even like, you notice how Ryan didn't milk the play clock all the way down to zero a few times there in the fourth right. quarter. And just, they're right. like, even when they got the ball back with 50 seconds left, my dad and well, I. I was going to say, that's more Belichick goal. Like, you have two plays, for, you, have, you know, it's second down. Either way, you have two plays or third down, right? Right. You, you, don't have to, you don't have to snap that ball with 57 seconds left or whatever it was. That was crazy. I think the momentum and just weirdness of that game kind of broke the Falcons mentally a little bit because there's just never mm-hmm. been a weirder football game. Do you know the Patriots ran 93 plays and the Falcons ran 46? Yeah. That's I, just, I know the, the Falcons I know had more points at halftime than they had plays and, uh, or offensive plays. Yeah, it was spectacular. If you look, the numbers don't make any sense if you add this up. And somehow Julio Jones only had four catches for eighty-seven yards. Mm-hmm. I would have guessed that he had seventeen catches for one hundred and ninety yards or something. But it just felt like those were the most impactful four catches. The uh, you watched, right. you were at a party, right? I was, and at that party, let me just say, longtime Patriots fans, Dickie Barrett of the Mighty Mighty Boston's, and Kevin Hench left early. Kevin Hench left they, early? They thought they think, and, and to your credit, you want to do this podcast right after the game, win or lose. I will say to your credit, but did you give up? Would you say you gave up? I did not give up. I think no? I think my, my dad almost gave up. I didn't give up mm-hmm. just because when it was 28 to 9, it was still touchdown, touchdown, field goal, even though we would need the two points. It was still doable. Right. Because the thing I kept thinking in my head was that in the Seattle game, which my dad and I just watched on Thursday night two years ago, they were mm-hmm. down 10 points with the ball with 11 minutes left, the Pats, and they scored two right. touchdowns. So I kept thinking in my head, like, if we can just get it within two touchdowns with 11 minutes left, it's it's not dissimilar from that Seattle game. But the thing I couldn't figure out was how the hell were we going to stop the Falcons since we weren't doing a very good job of it. It helped when Coleman went out. Um, yeah. And... It helped that Alex Mack was probably break, uh, playing on a broken leg. I think they kind of figured sure. out how to use that to their advantage. But By really, way, how did they hide that all week when millions of dollars are already wagered on this? And I like, know. are they going to get in trouble for hiding the, the broken bone, in the well, guy's leg? It came out. Of, it came out today, though, right? Today, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Like, all week. Yeah, yeah that, it felt like that should have affected the line maybe by a half point. I don't know. The now, I'm going to say something controversial. Please, so twenty-eight three. Go ahead. What no, you I, I'm waiting for it. Let's tell me. No, no, 28-3 with seven and a half left. So they have 22 points, 22 minutes to score one point, and they couldn't do it. So the Falcons scored 21 points. Their defense scored seven. Yep. I, I, Brady, I, I get it. He had 466 yards. He's not the MVP. I think the defense is the MVP. Oh, wow. Go crazy on me right now. I'm telling you. I give it to Trey Flowers. Two and a half gigantic sacks, four tackles. And like I said, they held the Falcons to 21 points and really held them to nothing with 22 minutes left in the game. Let's say the Falcons win the coin toss and they go down on a long drive and they and they score a field goal and then there's a kickoff. On, like something happens. Could Brady have won the MVP even if the Patriots lost? Does the winner have to win the MVP? Well, I mean, they don't have to. 
winner doesn't have to I, win. Because I don't know who, the, who was the Falcons MVP of that game. They had a lot of guys play well, but it, there was nobody that really jumped out. I guess we I were know. saying in at, in my house, we were saying if they had just won the game because of that amazing Julio catch and kicked a field goal and clinched it, I, I might have just given it to Julio. Because that, that, that was the greatest. I, I mean, that was just a gut-wrenching catch, and then the Pats somehow flipped it with the Edelman catch. What was your reaction to the Edelman catch? Well, I figured, I said, you know what, the tide has turned. At that point, I had no doubt that the Patriots were going to win, and I wish I could have bet the two-point conversion because I would have I would have bet 50 grand to win $5 that they were going to convert that uh, two-pointer at the end. But that, to me, is like, this is, this is you, you pass the Giants. The, you know, the, the Terrell oh, monkey you? is off your back. What's that? Oh, oh I thought I think, for you. I think for no, 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 not for hatred. Although I will say, like countrywide, I bet this is. I bet they are the most hated team now. I, I don't think. I don't think you have anyone who's in the rear mirror there. That's a tough one because at the same time, and I don't know. We'll see how it plays out over these next few days. Brady's will to win in that game and how unbelievable he was at the age he's at. There's there's mm-hmm. there's a little bit of Michael Jordan in you know in Utah 1998 level of edge to it right. I think which you know one thing about Americans whether you love a team or you hate them like when somebody goes really to a, a crazy crazy high level there's usually yeah. a little bit of a respect that goes with it I wonder I guess so we're taping this on a Sunday night and I I'm wondering like the next couple of days I do think I think Dan Quinn and Shanahan and Matt Ryan are gonna take a beating. You know, the, the sacks that they, they took should. and the calls, the Dan Quinn challenge with 203 left after the unbelievable oh. Edelman catch when, right. you know, the ref was so adamant that he caught it. And, yeah. you know, let just let it run down to two minutes and then watch it on the replay 20 times. The whole thing was yeah. weird. Uh, I think Shanahan started his tenure with the 49ers about three and a half minutes too early. <laughs> Try it with a chance to go up 11. And, yes, you're right. I think that, that challenge is – ridiculous yeah you let it go down to two minutes or like i i felt like we, we had seen the replay twice before the flag came out anyway like there's got to be someone watching in the booth that could alert him to the fact that that was a catch what was it like what was it like rooting against brady there in those last i don't know quarter and a half or whatever so much fun so much <laughs> no, fun. No, I mean, <laughs> did you just feel like he was going to complete every pass because i'm a, i'm rooting for him i don't know what it's like I said to Corolla, who, and I should have—I should have just told everyone that Corolla had the Falcons also. So that, that oh, just, no. that, that why did you announce that? Yeah. Uh, well, he it, it, it did it like a few minutes before the game, and oh. I, I, didn't say, I said, "I said, listen to me, Adam. At halftime, the Patriots are five to one to win the game. Five to one odds. It was twenty-one to three. With nine and a half minutes left, it was twenty-eight twelve. You were down sixteen. Yeah, they were ten to one odds to win the game." I oh said, we God. must jump on this because this is going to be the worst loss of all time if we don't get it, plus three, if we don't cover this. No, 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 let's ride it out. And uh, sure enough, <laughs> that went to worse. What was the, at that party, what was the biggest reaction for any play? Um, I think it was when Brad spilled a, a, a four-liter bottle of uh, Orange Crush, but, oh, oh just uh, game-wise, you're saying? <laughs> I didn't even know it came in four liters, but he did it somehow. <laughs> I got to say, one of the big moments. Now the catch, the Edelman catch was the Edelman bigger. catch was, I mean, that's, yeah. that was like, Edelman finally has a catch to, maybe the Seattle catch two years ago when he got concussed and just kept running. But this one, like, it was just the perfect play to illustrate what it's been like to watch Edelman in the last seven years. I don't know how many receivers mm-hmm. would have would have attacked the ball that way. Right. You know, it was almost like it was like he not just to keep them from intercepting it, but like to keep it up and it, amazing. I mean, that's going to be his legacy right. play for forever. And he gets two rings for sure. Yeah, I don't know. For sure. I, I don't think, know. Uh, I, I mean, you know, you know, I guess because he threw 62 times, you could say that he Brady should have had more interceptions than he did. Like I counted about four, but there were a lot of tip passes. And the tip pass that Bennett caught that really looked like the linebacker had sized up that was lucky. the return for, for yeah. the touchdown. That was obviously the Edelman one. But, um, yeah, spectacular. 37 first downs for the Falcons, 17. And that's how you win. Do you? I have a couple, a couple of things for you. Tom yeah. Brady now has more Super Bowls than both Manning brothers. Right. That was Chris Berman's wow. last 
last prime time. Oh, that was it, right? He yeah. dated when he dated. I actually watched it because I was waiting for Jim to get here to do the podcast, and uh-huh. and Berman did the highlights. It was it. It was his farewell. The the greatest did- football highlights he'll probably ever rattle <laughs> off, other than the Frank Wright game. He was. In rare form, too. It was great. I love that. Steve, did- circle the wagons. It was great. <laughs> I'm going to have to go back and watch. It I'm was gonna, great. I, I'm, I might tear up. <laughs> Should we go over some of these numbers, some of these uh, great odds that paid off and didn't pay off? Yeah, let's do it. Hold on. Before we do it, let's take a quick break to talk about books. I keep telling you, we have Valentine's Day coming up fast. Stop procrastinating. Secure your gift for your loved one right now. Get them gorgeous flowers from books. Books delivers to all 50 states. They even offer free delivery on weekdays when you register at books.com. Plus, books is pricing. It's transparent. You know what that means? No gimmicks, no hidden fees. What you see is what you get. They offer a wide array of farm-to-table and artisan flower bouquets at an accessible price. And because books cuts their flowers fresh, they last longer, so your dollar goes further. You know what else? Books are sourced from sustainable, eco-friendly farms located along the volcanoes of Ecuador, hills of Colombia, and the California coast. These are the best quality flowers you can get. They aren't cut until you order them. They last up to two weeks, and your dollar goes even further. Or they can last up to two weeks. Books delivers to all 50 states, and they even offer free delivery on weekdays when you register at books.com. And if you need something, at last minute, Books offers next day and same day delivery on select products. Be a hero on Valentine's Day. Save 20% when you order early on books.com. Their flowers will sell out for Valentine's Day. Don't delay. B-O-U-Q-S.com. Use code Bill for 20% off. Back to the podcast. All right. uh, Real quick, some of the stupid ones. Luke Bryan, under two minutes, nine seconds. I think it was like 204, 205, and he held it out, right? So... Uh, my son was next to me. Who my my son? I definitely think is gonna gonna be a gambler to watch down the road. Really loves Good. gambling, and I told mm-hmm. him you bet on the under and what it was, and he digested it. And we we got my <laughs> my phone out and we timed it. And it got closer and closer, and he was as excited as I've ever seen him. And I really awesome. feel good about his gambling future. <laughs> He got through. He's like, yes, Sal did it. Yes. I was like, exactly. This is gambling. This is it. Very good job, oh, my that son. Poor bastard. He's yeah. going to have to live with me this summer. I'll yeah. teach him. But, you know, if, uh, aside from that, we should mention the overtime. If, 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 if New England wins by a field goal, if they win 31-28, that's a push on both ends, the over-under and the spread on I mean, a lot of betting Oh, my houses. God. Like a lot. Yeah. So that, that would have been Do interesting. Do you think that's – has so, that ever happened? I don't think so. Not not with both. Maybe one of those uh, Cowboy Steelers games was close on both. So that I, touchdown, I so. that touchdown hit Pat's tease with the with the over. Yeah, everything. It hit. It hit just the straight on Pat's plus the over parlay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. That's amazing. Uh, let's just go over uh, some of these. There were no kneelers as far as I'm, I saw. Right. So that was minus two hundred over one and a half times they showed Giselle. That over. went over. One was a replay. Uh, Still counts. We had that. No, no Gatorade shower. So uh, you're getting your money back on that. Lots of fun your team is. Not even one Gatorade shower. Well, it was complete um, chaos. And then there was the chance that his knee was down before he scored the touchdown. Oh, that's true. And they would have yeah. to clear the confetti. <laughs> I think they just decided it was a touchdown. They, they, that was enough? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lady Gaga, Any uh, the, the field wins. Any other song? Because she did uh, – what, what did she do? She did um, – what, yeah. Whatever, my country tis it. What'd she do? Some kind of. Some I, I, I gotta be honest. I had it on mute as I tried to talk my dad yeah. off the ledge. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. for the halftime. Yeah, yeah, my dad was in rough shape at halftime. He's very upset. <laughs> He's, he didn't like our game plan. He thought that was it. We may, or, we may or may not have had the should we keep Jimmy conversation that may or may not have been had. Really? Wow. Just should we? Is it a mistake to trade him? Maybe we shouldn't. That might have been kind of floated a tiny bit wow not by me um Mm -hmm. but we're why are we so unprepared there's a lot of that um they did seem unprepared that that was the word that i came uh, that i threw around a lot they really just did not seem ready for that team at all but very sloppy it doesn't matter and and i think they were completely stunned that the falcons just had the four-man rush man-to-man and just did the the 2007 giants blueprint on them and it was working I don't think right. they knew how to audible away from it. And then eventually they realized 
spread the receivers and just let Brady do his thing. But it took three quarters. So crazy. What else? Coin toss was tails. No big deal there. Um, this, is, this is a good one. I, and we should maybe look into this for every game next year. Shortest touchdown of the game under one and a half yards. Always seems to happen. And that, that the was one again. Winner, I think uh, it was again. in the playoffs. Somebody emailed me this before when we talked about that bet. Ten of the 11 playoff games had a one-yard touchdown. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. There you go. Over four sacks, both teams. That shattered. That ended up being ten. I was very surprised by that. We talked about that, uh, right? Didn't you like the under? Yeah. I would have gone under. Yeah, I didn't think like, you know, mm. what, what did I see from either team that made me think like they were going to get to Brady, you know, and I thought maybe the Pats would have a couple sacks, but that's it. I think next year uh, people oh, have to yeah. go against our Super Bowl props because my two favorites were the Pats scoring in the second quarter and Isaiah mm. Thomas outscoring the Patriots, which he did not. And he was what getting he to enough points. Like? I think he had 28. Oh, uh -oh. so I guess he, he would have. Yeah, I know, but he, he he had a slow second half, so I think he finished with wow. 28, and I guess he would have outscored the Pats if it wasn't for the overtime. And I had Aldrick Robinson over six and a half yards, and I swear to God, he didn't dress for the game. I didn't see him at all. But oh, he didn't dress? What are you going to do? Oh, that's I don't sad. know he did, but I didn't, I didn't see him on the field at all. Um, over on the largest lead, 16 and a half, that went over, obviously. Overtime, will there be overtime? Seven to one odds you get that there's an overtime. First one in Super Bowl history. This is the one that killed me. Will one quarter be scoreless? I said no. I had that in a parlay. Yes, hit. It was plus 450. I, could, I mean, wow. 62 points scored, and, and there's a scoreless quarter. Missed extra point. I, I remember missed extra point. We discussed it or looked at it, and that hit. And then wasn't will Three there be one a – yeah. yeah, and wasn't will there be a two point conversion was a bet and there were two of them. I didn't even I don't even remember yeah. if there was a over under for one and a half two point conversions. That would have been interesting. Right. And even an attempt was almost even odds. Like that that's that's a good bet. Uh all was the way there, will Pat score Yeah. What was the over under well, for when my dad pulled out uh this little tin box that had heart pills in it? <laughs> Cause, was cause that it happened, at the end of the first quarter? No, it happened at the two-minute warning after the Edelman catch with, with the, uh, with the, oh, the fourth really? quarter. Oh, that way. And yeah. it was a great night for the Simmons family because they all came in <laughs> and and somehow rallied and really really kind of rallied the team. And everybody stayed in there. They figured out you can't leave the spot you're sitting in because it's bad luck, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And and I do feel like the karma in the room and maybe other rooms around the country might have helped a tiny bit. But when my dad put out the heart pills, that's when I really felt confident. Oh, no. Yeah, because oh, I've seen him do it before. Stuff. I've seen him do it before. The heart pills works. So, yeah. Yeah. And well, then Ben probably put him in a wrestling move, right? Did he have in the, in the he skull loved it. crusher or something? Well you, know, <laughs> yeah. well, you know this from your oldest son. Ben's now on the stage yeah. where you go to school the next day and you taunt all the kids in your class who so like the other team. So yeah. he's all excited about that. That's a great era for elementary school. It's going to raise Pat's right. jersey, do the whole thing. I have to say, I was going to say that to you. You don't really, you never really had experience that. Like, I remember get, being afraid to get on the bus when the Cowboys lost three NFC championships in a row. I was like, I'm going to hear this crap. I know, I don't want to hear it. You really, you really dodged that your whole life, didn't no, you? No, no, I didn't dodge it because when I moved to, when my parents got divorced and then I eventually moved to Connecticut, and that's when the uh -huh. 86 Red Sox, and I was in, Connect, you know, the the furthest part of Connecticut toward New York. So it was all New Yorkers. And I watched game six at a high school party at Tom Demas' house. But really? not yeah. good. So I I have fully experienced that. You had a good, yeah, but you never went on a bus. I mean, you've never been on a bus. <laughs> oh, you life. mean like in third grade? Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> That that Brady will uh, or that either quarterback will break the passing record of four fourteen was plus three fifty. Mm. Um, pa Patriots by four to six points plus seven fifty. Uh, Patriots to score exactly thirty four twelve to one. Uh, same for uh, Falcons at twenty eight twelve to one. Um, what was Brady's MVP final odds? I think it was minus one ten. And Devontae Freeman, I think, was nine to one for first touchdown. Was it that high? I thought it was like seven, seven to one or something. I thought it was, I don't know. I don't think it was that high. What was? Uh, what, Brady, were, what were the Brady odds? Complete, com Go ahead. I was going to ask. What were the odds for when Fox waited until the ultimate moment to run the Boston titles versus Atlanta titles montage, which I thought was flat out cruel, just for the record. Even though my team was the winner <laughs> in that, having been on the other side of that, uh, especially right. two thousand three and oh four with baseball. 
They waited. They they could have they could have run that when it was twenty one three when it was twenty eight three. They waited until the Falcons fans were at a very weak moment and then just rattled that off and reminded them, oh yeah, your your team is never you've never had a team win except for the Braves. I wow. thought that was mean. That was like four and a half minutes left when they did it. Anyway, and that's when Rember Brown reached into your dad's hard pill box. It was like uh, these are for me. What do I do? I, I I'm afraid. I'm afraid I, I'm just going to wait till Rem texts me. And it might be five give years Give him a now. few days. Yeah, I'll yeah. give him a few years. This is like, this is like a first date kind of thing. you got to just slip back off yeah, for a second. I think so. Uh, Brady over 41 completions. 40 to 1. <laughs> oh, 40 to 1. Oh, that got a Jim Cunningham turned red on that one. 40 to 1. <laughs> 40 Insane. completions. I, it only went up to 41. Like 41 plus completions was 40 to 1. Uh, Matt Ryan... 281 to 300 is 7 to 1 odds. Matt Ryan total completion 17, 80 to 1. Interesting. How about uh, uh, the, Pats like said, had, the Pats had 37 first downs, and those odds had to have been. I, I mean, it's, I, they probably didn't even have a bet yeah, for that. I don't see that. 37 yeah, first that, that, downs, though. So. What's that? 37 that's first lot. downs. Yeah. That's a crazy, crazy number. Yeah. 36 in the, first, in the second half. No, I don't know. Not that many, but a lot. Um, this land is my land. That was a Lady Gaga song. Plus two twenty-five. Edelman seven to one odds on uh, on eighty-one to ninety receiving. Hey, Sal, what uh, were the odds of Terry Bradshaw calling James White, James Lewis on the Super Bowl post game podium stand? Did he do it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he interviewed. They interview uh, Belichick and Brady, and he's like, "Let's bring up James Lewis. James, get up here." <laughs> Poor James oh, no. White, the greatest moment of his life. He's called James. Do you? What do you do? Do you correct Terry Bradshaw at that point? I think you do, right? I think you smack him in the back of the head. I know. Maybe you're just happy he didn't call you Huey Lewis. I don't know what, don't know what you do there. Or, or uh, Slappy White. Let's bring up yeah, Slappy right. White. Slappy White. <laughs> uh, Devonta Freeman was plus 850 for first touchdown. That's what it went off of. And those were, those were the big ones, as far as I know. So was that? do you think that was the biggest coin toss of all time? Oh yeah, I was yeah, trying I to think, think so. of like what like what are the biggest coin tosses I've ever seen. All of them would have to be football or college football. I'm sure there's been some massive ones in college football, but mm-hmm. in college football, you know, you're getting, you know, one team gets it, the other team gets it, so it can't be that massive. Right. Yeah. This, Did you have any doubt that you were scoring there? Like, like I think like fourth and five from the forty. I think you're even going like the, 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 not. I don't, you didn't even get to third down. I don't think on that drive. This is gonna sound weird, but I'd never been in this situation before where my team had run so many plays that mm-hmm. we're talking about like how do the receivers how do they have anything left? You think like Edelman? Right. You know, we ran ninety three plays. Edelman's probably out there for eighty of them and. For the entire second half, those guys are just running across the middle, running wind sprints. Brady's taken, you know, twenty hits, including some mm-hmm. a couple really bad ones. And he's thirty nine years old, and it's the fourth hour of the game. I did I I I did not feel like it was a lock that they were going to go down and score. Oh, but I felt. And then you feel Atlanta was way out of gas at that point. Their I defense. thought. Yeah, I to me Atlanta felt more deer in the headlightsy. Like when when Matt yeah. Ryan. Uh, you know that we talked about some of those moments, but even when they had the ball back with 50 seconds left, and mm-hmm. they had the one first down, and 20 seconds rolled off, and then he threw the four yeah. yard out to the tight end. I was like, "Wow, he is just this moment yeah, might be a little big for him." It. Yeah, he just right. he, seemed like he was uh, self combusting a little bit. So for sure, I, I felt I felt better about that, but I still felt like, you know, I mean, you've rooted against Julio. He, yeah, he's fucking terrifying. And I just, even with 50 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever, you just think, like, just if they throw it to Julio, we're screwed. Like, they'll get a pass interference. It'll, something will happen. But and, everything was, like, miraculous with him. Even that catch over the middle where he had to, like, wrestle it around. Like, I right. think what they did what they normally do. They put two cornerbacks on Julio or two uh, a D-back, uh, two D-backs on Julio, and then their best one, Butler, was on Sanu, right? Yeah. Like, uh, isn't that what the Patriots do? Yeah, and with, it freaking worked. I think it worked for the most part. What they what seemed like it was sitting there all game for them were those running backs running in those quick, hard screen passes that were almost mm-hmm. like, you know, forward yeah. sweeps. And like that mm-hmm. play that Coleman scored on 
on the goal line when he started on the left and he just, as soon as the ball is hiked, he's flying across and Ninkovic just wasn't fast enough. And I thought that's how they would just kill us over and over again. But, um, wow. So I, this is a, I didn't realize you lost money on this. This is yet, it's been a run of terrible losses for you going back to, uh, going back to the NBA finals on the year somehow on cousin Sal's short thing. But you know, my, my other props were Deion Lewis over two receptions. Friggin' Brady threw the ball over 60 times. And he only has one reception. Like, they didn't use Lewis. Uh, yeah, it was weird. Uh, uh, it, it, you just don't know with Belichick. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, plus three. The fact that I bought it up to three and a half and the game's going over to, like, you know, all the nonsense, all the two-point conversions that had to go through for, for it to get to overtime and then to not even lose by three in overtime. Uh, I was thinking more of, like, you had – you had uh, the NBA Finals. The Cleveland comes back three to one. You had the Trump came back, and you had the Pats come back. Those right. are three straight like historic comebacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There had to be something else. I don't know. It was something. I wonder what the net. Yeah, I'll, I'll enjoy the break. I'll enjoy the break. I, I somehow didn't have the Cleveland Indians. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the reaction when? Uh, when the Pats actually won at the party, just to, just tell me because I I just was with like five people. Oh, most of the people had uh, in the room had the Patriots. It was like uh-huh. forty people. Our friend Daniel was going nuts, even though he has like crazy bets, like safety is the last score and everything. He right. he bet the Pats at halftime five to one. Everyone was uh, it was jubilation. It really okay. was. All right, it was. But congratulations. That's a that's another big win. Thanks, Cuz. I guess he's he's the greatest of all time. Why it do you guess? Is there guessing comeback. now? Is there guessing at this point? I don't know. Point? I just don't think there's, there was much. I know Montana came back against Cincinnati that, that one game and they won, but it, it seems so, so so chaotic with some of these Brady games. I'm I know. sorry. I thought he could have thrown like four interceptions, but and that's not the game plan you wanted where he throws over 60 times. But no. You figured it out, and they won again. They really did. Super Bowl odds are out for next year. You want to hear them? Yeah, give me like the top six. Okay, Pats nine to two, yep. Cowboys seven to one, Cowboys seven to one, Atlanta ten to one, Pittsburgh mm. twelve to one, Green Bay twelve to one, Oakland and Seattle twelve to one, Casey twenty to one. Browns are at the bottom at two fifty to one. Casey's interesting because what if they get Romo? Right. Yeah. Wow. You could load up on that. Well, I'm not ready to think about okay. next year yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna soak <laughs> this one in some more. The cuz enjoy it. Congrats on at least finishing in the positive on Cousin Sal Sure Thing Year One. Thank you. I don't know how I did it, but uh, I, I was I made a, a little money. And congrats to you, and congrats to Vladimir Putin. He gets another ring. That's I know. Terrific news. We're gonna mail this one to him. He's not actually taking it. We're just gonna <laughs> mail it to him. Oh, we didn't even talk about Goodell. Maybe I'll save that for my oh, dad because I'm gonna yeah. call my dad. Oh, do you have any Goodell? I'll give your dad a call. What did you did notice? They all shake hands like they were good friends, right? I thought I thought he bolted off the podium. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, I would love for somebody out there to study the time that Goodell spends on the podium for all these other Super Bowl celebrations during this one. It seemed like he hightailed it out of there. Right. Uh, right. Kraft was I crafted a magnificent job with the speech. I was very proud of him. That was great. This little, I thought two years ago FU, was the best. Was yeah. But after <laughs> what we've endured the last two years, and I'll leave it at that. That was great. Does I, Goodell have Dan Quinn and Shanahan? Does he call them into his office and uh, threaten their lives? I think I think both of them might be floating in the uh, in 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 some Houston oil field tomorrow. It's very possible. Uh, the Cuz, a pleasure. Great season. We will talk to you uh, before March. No, oh, we'll talk. We'll do Oscars. We're gonna do Oscars props before. Oh uh, yes, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right, right good job by you. Good job by you. Congratulations. Thanks, buddy. Congrats. Let's take a quick break to talk about Lyft. I really hope you've downloaded the Lyft app. You can get a ride in minutes for less than the cost of a cab. Every Lyft driver is fully vetted through their 10-point safety standard. They're rated after every ride, so only the best stick around. And with Lyft, you can tip in the app, which obviously leads to happier and better drivers. Nine out of 10 Lyft rides get a perfect five-star rating for the passenger. It's also the highest-rated ride-sharing app, and it's your buddy whenever you need a ride. I heard people are actually getting rid of their cars and relying on Lyft to get around. Part of me wishes my wife would do that because I would feel safer with her in a Lyft car than with her running over potholes and uh, 
and sideswiping cars, which may or may not have happened recently. It's also the highest rated ride sharing app in your buddy whenever you need a ride. I already said that. Right now, Lyft is offering our listeners a special deal. Get three free rides for up to $10 each, up to a $30 value when you enter promo code Bill Simmons. So download the free Lyft app today, enter promo code Bill Simmons in the payment section. Three free rides, up to $10 each. L-Y-F-T. That's how you spell it. Lyft. Try it out. Back to the podcast. We're going to call my dad in one second, but just don't forget to check out TheRinger.com for all of our Super Bowl 51 content and The Ringer NFL show, the big wrap-up show on there and that podcast tomorrow and then Mike Lombardi and Mays probably on Wednesday breaking down the whole thing. But I think tomorrow's Mays and Kevin Clark. Danny Kelly will get involved at some point. Check that out, The Ringer NFL show. Subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, wherever it's told. Wherever uh, wherever you subs- I can't even talk anymore. I, I'm officially crashing after one of the great Boston wins of all time. My dad's on the phone. He's actually at my house. Dad, are you still alive? I'm still alive. I just took another heart pill, but <laughs> I'm hanging in there. I told Sal that, that, that those came out right around the two-minute warning, and I asked if you covered the prop of when the heart pills are going to come out. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to need them during the game, but then, then the I, game started I, I getting didn't exciting. Think, but after the strip stack uh, and the mem- momentum seemed to change, everything was different, wasn't it? Yeah, um, I felt like you quit it. I felt like you quit at halftime. I did feel like you. I th- thought you checked oh, out. Oh no, 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 no. I but thought, hey, I thought you checked I out. I mean, we're down. I, when we were down twenty-five points, my concern. I kept looking at the TV. Was the clock? How much time do we have left? And and would we be able to stop Atlanta when we got the ball back? Why, was all. why did you ask me? Why did you say to me? I think we should keep Jimmy Garoppolo. What did you mean by that? Halftime. <laughs> did I say that? Why did you say that we're not? What maybe we should keep Jimmy Garoppolo? I thought was one of your quotes at halftime. <laughs> I just don't remember saying that. Uh, maybe uh, I just like him. I thought that you know, in five years, he could take Brady's place. Uh, let's talk about. There was an incredible seat change at halftime. There was. Uh, we started out. Know, I was let, on let's, the. Let's I, face, let, yeah, you know, we were getting out. We were getting out played, and we, you and I, changed seats, and then your wife and the two kids came in to join us, and all of a sudden. Plus, and your mother left. My All mother of a sudden, left. The momentum changed. Everything my mother changed. Yeah, my mother. I think she came to put the Maloik on the Pats because she's upset that um, she feels like Belichick and Brady are friends with Trump. And you know, I I don't need to say what side of uh, the fence she's on on that one. And right. the moment she left, it was like a cloud lifted over the game. Now she did go <laughs> home. And she she does a shrine sometimes for me with the Boston thing where she puts little pictures. Good luck. I think she felt bad yeah. that she put the Maloik on the Pats, and she ended up uh, she ended up getting the shrine, getting it up. She sent me a picture, and it was right around when the comeback happened. So, well, I'm uh, glad to hear that. It, it, maybe that was another factor that helped. Thanks to uh, her. I, <laughs> my my exciting moment was when they won that game, and. Everyone in the room went leaping in the air, including your two kids. It's a moment none of us will ever forget, like anybody who was watching that game. Greatest game ever. Greatest game ever you're giving. Wow. I'm, I'm get, that I've seen in my lifetime. I, I didn't, obviously don't remember some of the United games and that they say were the, that, that championship game that many people call the greatest game ever. In my lifetime, I've never seen a better game. You know, we came out as victors, and I say we, somebody who loves the Patriots, but... Well, think about um, it. We had... You, we started rooting for the Pats in the early 70s, and it was... The 70s were pretty miserable. Right. And the 80s were pretty miserable, and then we had the one good year, and then we got killed in the Super Bowl, and there was a cocaine scandal. And then the late 80s were really miserable, and the early 90s were even worse, and the team almost moved, and Parcells and Bledsoe came... Made the Super Bowl, lose again, kicked off to Desmond Howard. Parcells left. Pete Carroll, all hell broke loose. Now we're rock bottom again. Belichick shows up. We go five and eleven or six and ten. I can't even remember. And then Molos hits Bledsoe, and from that point on, uh, 
one of the most unbelievable runs ever in sports. And it well, ends with and, this you and tonight. You I talked about it before the, before the game, that we've had 16, as football fans, 16 unbelievable years that no other city can really appreciate. And, and it's probably, probably why so many people across the country are anti-Patriot fans. Uh, oh, I don't think you know, I don't think it's probably. I, I would say it's definitely right. It's been an, it's um, been a crazy it's been a crazy run of good luck and great games and some that we lost, but um, just like you know, this started in two thousand one, a couple months after nine eleven, right. and goes. I mean, uh, I I guess February two thousand two, but you start with the tuck roll, which was January two thousand two. And goes all the way through now. And this, you know, the, two years ago they won a Super Bowl because on the one-yard line, our cornerback jumped a slant route and intercepted the game-winning touchdown. And they, I thought they that had was... Studied extensive, right. They had studied extensively before the game. And I thought that... In I, preparation. And I was just assumed that that, that, that was going to be the greatest Super Bowl win that ever happened right. for me as right. a Patriots fan. And then today happened and I almost can't even process it like I just did a podcast with Lombardi and Sal where we talked about the game a little more technically but like the just I, the whole comeback part and just how crazy that was I don't think it'll set in for a couple of weeks like the 04 Red Sox yeah. remember that 04 Red Sox we didn't even really fully digest what happened until like December it took like right. two months to sort it out I think I feel like this game's gonna be like that too I, yeah, I think the more newspaper articles you read, the more re- repeats of certain plays that they'll play all week long. Um, I understand tomorrow it's obligatory that the MVP of the Super Bowl has a press conference with the commissioner. Did you know that? No. The Monday morning after? No. Uh, that's going to be interesting. Everybody would love to know what Brady said when... Out of the blue, Goodell sh- put his hand out and tried to shake his hand, and he did, obviously. It looked like he held the um, handshake. He held it for a couple extra seconds, Goodell. That he just well, gave him a nice maybe, firm one. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I, I had kind of wished Brady had pulled his hand away and looked the other way, but he, he was a it, gentleman, that, obviously. It's the right move was to be to be cool about it because he won. Yeah. Like, he shoved it right in his right. face, so be cool about right. it. Um. Yeah, that was and I and we I was just telling Sal Goodell definitely hightailed it off the podium. It seemed a little faster. Are you kidding? A little faster than uh, usual. He, he was gone. He, he was off there. If if Atlanta had won, he'd still be on the podium. I kept um, thinking about the end of that game for him was like our, one of our favorite movies ever, Shawshank, when uh, when the warden, the police sirens are coming and it, and he goes and he opens the safe and right. and it's the Bible with the rock hammer in it. <laughs> Right. And he's like, "You're right. You're right." Word and salvation did come with it. And he just had that look on his face. I was pictured that was right. good though. Yeah. Um, oh man. With, with the exception that he didn't pull the gun out and put it under his chin. <laughs> no, uh, no. Thank God. That would have. That would have been. That would have marred the salvation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've also. Well, wait, hold on. A couple more big picture questions. Okay. Is Brady now at the top? Yes. Of all the Boston athletes. Would you put him over Bird? Oh, of all the Boston athletes. Yeah. Yes. I think I, I mean, would five, too. five championships. Um, I mean, Bird won three. I was we thinking... He'd win a couple more, but it didn't happen. Yeah, the longevity makes it separate. I, I wasn't there for Russell. The longevity makes it different, or obviously got cut short. And, uh, and I wasn't there for Russell either, but you're also talking about... Uh, a smaller league when Russell played. True. You're talking about the NFL the last 20 years has gone out of its way to create, in their minds, parity so that there would never be another dynasty. Yep. And we've not only have we won five Super Bowls in this century, we've won two of the last three Super Bowls. I know. That's crazy. And I, and I, I wrote this a couple weeks ago, you know, this is going to end soon and then they're going to be like every other team and you know, we'll probably won't win another one and it will just be like all these other well, teams. Well, but that's why I said keep Garoppolo around so then five years he can take over. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would, I, I think Brady is the unequivocal one. And I will say like when it was 28 to nine or whatever, counting the points and trying to figure out how you come back, it, 
it was really only because of him. It wasn't like anyone else on the team right. was playing well. It wasn't like a, you're thinking like, oh, the defense. Like the defense played well in the second half, but not to the degree that uh, you would think they had any. You know that that would have been the fulcrum of it. Obviously, we needed Brady, and and you know he was there. He was still locked in. He was getting the shit kicked out of him. And right. uh, you you because you left to go do the podcast. You missed a lot of the interviews with the other Patriot players. Yeah. And to a person, to a man, every one of them brought up how Brady would not let them lose. Yeah. How they had confidence in Brady. How Brady made them feel like any comeback was possible. I mean, he's such a unique... We won't see his likes again. No. Maybe in Boston, but certainly not in the NFL. Well, we felt that um, with Bird when Bird was done, we knew. I mean, we knew we knew it was never going to be the same. But then, man, that void the next six, seven years, and then you go back and you go, "Oh, I wish I had appreciated right, that more." Right, right, and then, right. and then, uh, you know, it, it'll be like that with Ortiz to a lesser degree. I don't, you know, obviously, shorter career, and he's a DH, and it's just hard for him to have the same day to day impact that somebody like Brady no, but had. He did but win three championships, he did. just yeah. like Bird. Yeah. 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 But, you know, there's um, going to be a void, but it's baseball. There's a lot of guys on the team. The Brady thing, um, you know, I just think the beating that he took in that game and all the passes he threw, 62. Uh, well, you, you know, they, when his press conference, which I think you missed, he talked about he really got beat up. Yeah. And, and he did. Not in the fourth quarter, obviously. As you and I were talking during the fourth quarter, it was obvious Atlanta got tired, and Coach Quinn in his press conference said they really got tired. Yeah. You know, did you know that uh, Atlanta ran 46 offensive plays? Yeah, 46 to 93. we ran 93? Yeah. Unprecedented. Never heard of before. No wonder they were tired. Next question. Um, is that the greatest Boston win? Hmm. For you? Of yes. all of them? I think I think so. I I think so because you know when in the in the Bird Championship those three championship years um we never had the hammer great win. No, we never did. I mean that the 86 team you know we we played Houston and yeah, we never felt like out. Houston was going to beat us. So 84 game um, 7 was great, but that was like a that was a that wasn't a very well played game. It was super exciting and incre- incredibly. We were both there. It was the passion and the everything was just off the charts. But it, there was it wasn't it, like a magical game. You know, you wouldn't. The watch only thing it I could times. compare it to for me in my lifetime were the uh, Yankee games in two thousand and four. That's what where, I was thinking. Yeah, I mean we're down we were three there. nothing. Yeah, we were there. We went to the games. We're down three nothing. You know, it's a, nobody had ever come back. From three nothing in the in the playoffs, and I think it's comparable. Um, for me, the, the, they're two of my best memories ever. So, yeah, I would say it's comparable because of how insane the game was, and also, you know, the last two years of the Flake Eight and the end of Brady's career, and this possibly being the last Brady Belichick thing. I, I right. think you know it's tough to compete with eighty six years of getting your ass kicked, but. Um, well, the irony is just what you just said. I just read an article on ESPN that the Patriots are the overwhelming favorite to win yeah. the Super Bowl next year. <laughs> pretty funny. The, but the Malcolm Butler game was pretty crazy. The first pet, the Pats beating the Rams was way up there. I mean, we've we just had a really, really uh, fortunate The win. Malcolm Butler got it, game, though, um, I, I always felt that that game – we should have won that game more handily, and it never should have been that close. Right. So it was a different feel in that game than this game. Did, uh, We're 25 points down in this game. Have you ever felt worse for another team that we beat to win a championship? I feel awful for the Falcons fans. I mean, that, yeah, that, that, um, was, that was an absolute car crash of a loss. And that was the it, one thing that made me it, feel it bad. It was. I know somebody's got to win. I remember you and I in 2008 at Glendale, Arizona, walking True. out of that stadium, and we felt pretty bad. So yeah, we it's hard to win. compare. I know. We had, but we were I, going for the perfect season. 
Yeah, but we already won a couple of Super Bowls. I would yeah, say this. Not, is, you're right. It's it's not quite the same. This is more like. I mean, this is honestly more like the Buckner game for them. For them, yeah. You blow yeah, a 25 right. point lead. You have. You're on the 23 yard line with the ball up seven. First down, four and a half minutes left. And and you haven't won a Super Bowl ever, and you have one title ever. It's pretty bad. But one of the other ironies is that I thought during the first three quarters of this game, Kyle Shanahan's offensive play calling was superior to McDaniel's. Yeah. But now, uh, reading online and also a couple of the comments that were made on the NFL Network, they're highly criticizing some of his play calls in the fourth quarter. Yeah. I agree. Um, and particularly some of the, when that they they had that third and one and they passed and right. got strip sacked and da 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 da. So it's funny how it, the worm turns a little bit. So good for us. This has been an unbelievable run. I don't know. I don't. I don't really know what happened this century. But five Super Bowls, three World Series, a Celtics title, and you got a Stanley Cup. And Keep a Bruins title. Yeah. yeah. That. uh I mean that's nine. It's that's nuts. pretty unbelievable. The other thing and is, I'm flying revenge. home to Boston. I'm flying home to Boston tomorrow, and I'll be at the parade either Tuesday or Wednesday when they hold it. And uh, what a parade that's going to be! I will say, out of out of all the parades that have ever happened in Boston, I think the ovation for Brady will be the the biggest ever. Right? I, I, yep. Yep. Definitely. Oh, most definitely. It's his Brady fifth. and Belichick, obviously. Yeah, no, nah, but the Brady and the Goodell and the, just everything he went through yeah. the last two years and the character assassination, all that stuff, I think. Right, I think, right, uh, right. I, you know, it's really hard to explain. Um, you know, unless you, obviously all the Pats fans lost their mind over this, the flake thing, I include myself, but to, to watch him get his revenge and have Goodell have to come over and shake his hand was just a little extra bonus. Well, it was it was our dream scenario. Wasn't it really it? was. Well, we'd, we'd get to see him up on the stage with Roger Goodell. Dad, it was fun to watch it. I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad the kids were able to help out. Uh, as always, thanks for making me a Boston sports fan. I'll see you when um, I get home. Um, uh, it was fun to uh, watch it with you and your family. I'm glad I had my heart medication, <laughs> and uh, hopefully we win number six next year. All right, I'll see you in a little bit. Thanks. All right, take care. Bye. That's it for the pod. Thanks to Books. I'm going to send myself flowers. I might send myself some Books after after another Boston title. Remember, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. You are almost out of time to find a gift. Thankfully, Books has you covered with a wide array of farm-to-table and artisan flower bouquets at an accessible price. You can save 20% when you order early, and you better because these will sell out. Don't wait. Go to Books.com. Get 20% off your order using offer code Bill. Thanks to Mike Lombardi. Thanks to Cousin Sal. Thanks to my dad. Thanks to Jim Cunningham for coming in on short notice. Uh, thanks to everybody who's been listening during the whole football season. We will be back with more podcasts later in the week. Thanks to Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. What a game. Wow. All right. See you later in the week. <laughs>